What up? What up? What up? What up? It's your boy E T A. Be epic. Be epic. Shout out to the Be Epic Revolutionary Family. It's your boy E T A. Special, special shout out. Ricky B and Demetrius, man. I'm super excited to be in the building today. All right, guys, I got something for you. Please do me a huge favor. I'm not here to inspire you only. I'm not only here to motivate you, but I'm here to persuade you and to empower you to be epic, all right? So I want to steal uh, a quote from my boy, uh, Mustafa, uh, and that is, what are you expecting to get out of this particular presentation? Come on, y'all. Are you hearing me? What are you expecting? So I want you to write it down, like literally. Uh, what area, one, are you not epic in that you desire to be epic in, right? And why do you desire to be epic in that particular area? Like, what is it going to do for you? What is it going to do for those of you love? What is it going to do for the world around you, all right? So for real, before I get started, let's write. Write that down. Eric, man, I would love to be epic financially, but I'm not. I would love to be epic in my health, but I'm not. I would love to be epic in my relationships, but I'm not, right? I want you to write that down. And why do you want to be epic? Like, what is the outcomes? Because look, I'm not here to talk to you for the next 15, 20 minutes because I don't have nothing to do. I'm here to talk to you because I want to give you the tools you need to succeed. All right? I want to give you the tools you need to succeed. All right? So it doesn't make sense for me to talk if you don't have a destination. Right? If you don't have a North Star. It doesn't make sense for me to talk to you if you don't have a North Star. So your North Star is, I want to be epic in this particular area. And I'm going to tell you the things you need to do to be epic in that area. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share four. That's right. Four principles to help you to succeed. All right. So here's principle number one. All right. Look, and I think this is the most appropriate quote of all quotes during COVID-19. All right. Look, never let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, you got two types of people. You got people when they sit at the dinner table, they waste food, and you got people like me. <laughs> you don't let no good food go to waste. All right? You eat all your food. Are you hear what I'm saying? And some of you are letting a good crisis go to waste. You have a bad attitude. Listen to me. That's not the attitude of the epic. You can't be epic whining. You can't be epic looking at the bad. You can't be epic a crying about a situation. Listen to me very closely. There is nothing you could do about the coronavirus. There's nothing we could do about COVID-19. There's absolutely nothing that we can do in terms of why it started, where it started. But what we can do is ride that wave and get the best out of it. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, 2012, my wife was diagnosed um, with multiple sclerosis. Like it's even hard to talk about it and think about it. Why? Didi and I started dating in uh, 1986. She was 15. I was 16 years old. And we dreamed of having a family. And we dreamed of you know, having good careers and living in a nice neighborhood and driving nice cars and going on vacation. We never dreamed of my wife having a chronic illness. But you know, I remember leaving the hospital and I had to make up in my mind, do we believe the crisis that the doctor gave us, or do we believe the crisis that we are going to create for ourselves? It's a crisis nonetheless. We, we weren't able to take uh, uh, the, the, the seven legions off her brain. A crisis it was. But the doctor said she could lose her sight. She could lose her memory. She could not walk again. She could be in a wheelchair. She could lose her memory. Right. And I said that we're going to take this crisis and we're going to make the most of this crisis. This crisis is going to bring our marriage closer. This crisis is going to help us to make our dreams become a reality. This crisis is going to help the kids appreciate their mom more. This guy, and guess what? I worked hard and I was able to save our income that we needed for a year for 30 years. Guys, I work like I never worked before. I grind like I never grind before. As a matter of fact, I went, I, I, I went from nobody knowing who I was to the number one motivational speaker in the world. My wife now works for the church. My wife worked for my company. We, the last four or five years, she quit her job and we travel everywhere together. We was in quarantine before it was in quarantine. 
humanity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We never let a good crisis go to waste. We took a crisis and we made the most out of it. So I want you to think about the crisis you're going through right now. And how can you turn this crisis, watch, watch, watch the <laughs> watch the adjective, a good crisis, right? You get to decide, you don't get to decide the crisis, but you get to decide the adjective. Is it a good crisis? Is it a great crisis? Right, 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 right. Is it a creative crisis or is it a bad crisis? The worst crisis. You don't get to decide the subject, but you get to decide the adjective that describes the subject. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right, so do me a favor. Never let a good crisis go to waste in your life. Eat all your food or your grandma won't give you no more. All right, let's go. Oh, 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 oh guys, and I think this is important, right? I think this is important to understand that it was actually the COVID-19 crisis that made me value work in a way I had never valued work before. I, I, guys, I thought I was putting in work, but the coronavirus actually pulled more out of me than I had ever been pulled out before, guys. I, I, I thought that um, because I couldn't go on the road anymore, I wasn't going to be able to do presentations. I'm doing more presentations in coronavirus than I ever did before, guys. Uh, I'm getting up earlier. I'm staying up later. Watch this, guys. This is crazy. My company is actually meeting every single day for hours at a time, multiple times a day. We have really restructured and rebuilt and recovered our business. Like It's unbelievable. We actually have a brand new business because of coronavirus. Are you doing what I'm saying? So the value of hard work, guys, came out. Do me a favor. I'm telling you, if you want it to be a good crisis, the way it becomes a good crisis is by putting in great work phenomenal work so never underestimate the value of work all right guys i'm super excited let's go to number two let's go to number two <laughs> what got you here won't get you there oh come on guys come on so here's what i'm talking about i'm talking about being hungry i'm talking about being hungry guys what got you here and for a lot of us what what got us here uh, um, it, it, man, it got you to this company, the Epic, the Revolutionary Family. It, it got you with Ricky V. It got you with Demetrius. It got you here. But what you have is not going to get you there. And one of the great things that the crisis is doing, the crisis is making me hungry. The crisis, two, two hungers. One, it's, it's making me appreciate what I already had, right? It's making me appreciate the skill set I already had. But now it's telling me, E, you, look, you, that, that skill set you had, it's not going to get you through this crisis. You got to be hungry, guys. And so I'm studying more. I believe that I'm, I am way more careful than I've ever been before. I believe I'm way more analytic than I've ever been before. I'm way more systematic than I've ever been before. Oh, guys, I'm way more of a perfectionist than I've ever been before. Guys, this is unbelievable. My system is almost like I'm Phil Jackson and I got the triangle off in. Like I used to just uh, 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 work off my talent, meaning my raw ability to speak. I was very creative. I told stories, narratives, like no, nobody could, uh, 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 nobody had the passion that I had. But what I realized was, E.T., that got you here, but it won't get you through the coronavirus. It won't get your company to the next level. So you got to be hungry. You got to add something to your repertoire that wasn't there before. You got to add something to your tool belt that didn't exist before. So I'm telling you, if, 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 if the coronavirus didn't allow you to be a hustler, the corona coronavirus didn't allow you to pull out more skill set than you've ever had before. You are in trouble, my friend. I don't know about you, but the coronavirus made me hungry. The coronavirus made me go deeper. It made me pull harder. It made me study longer. It made me wiser. Now I'm bigger, bolder, with broader shoulders. Are you hearing me? I'm bigger, bolder, with broader shoulders now. So what got you here, it won't get you to epic. What got you here, might have taken you from average to good. But I'm telling you, you need more skills to go from where you are to epic. And if you had them, you'd already be there. So the reason why you're not there is because you don't have certain skills, right? And I need you to get those skills. All right, all right. Come on, guys. Come on. Number three, guys. Number three. I'm super excited, y'all. I'm super excited. Watch this. Number three. Come on. Come on. Habit stacking is what I call it. Habit stacking. So you say, what do you mean with these skills? I'm already skilled. But look, you need to add. Michael Jordan uh, 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 was an all-star. Uh, Michael Jordan won 
uh, um, scoring titles. Michael Jordan won the dunk contest. Michael Jordan uh, had a Nike uh, advertisement. He had a Gatorade advertisement. He had a Hanes. All right, all right. Michael Jordan uh, went to the uh, NBA uh, 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 Eastern Conference Finals. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Michael Jordan did a lot, but he never won a championship. The first seven years, he did not win a championship. And guess what he had to do? He, started, he had to start lifting weights, and he hated lifting weights. But he had to add a skill to the skills that already existed. He, your problem is you don't want to have it that. You want to keep working on what you're already good at or what you're already great at. You want to keep talking about what you've already accomplished. Nobody's mad at you for what you accomplished. But you got, in order to be epic, you got to add to average. You got to add to good. You got to add to great to be epic. And you're still focusing on how good you are, or how great you are. But they're trying to make you epic. And so Mike had to add lifting weights. Mike had to stop scoring so much and start playing defense and start distributing the ball. Mike had to become an entirely different player. He had to start lifting weights. He had never lifted weights a day in his life. That's the first one, y'all. Look at the second one when he had it stacked. Watch this one, y'all. <laughs> the definition. Do you see the definition? Do you see the control Mike has now? Now, and not only is he talented in terms of his raw ability, not only does he have a mind for the game that's out of control, now he has the body to match. Now he's mind, body, hand, soul. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Sound mind, sound body, sound mind, sound body. He had a sound mind, sound skill, but he didn't have a sound body. And so in order to be epic, you got to add, you got to have it stat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And here's my final one, y'all. <laughs> here's my bonus. Success is going from failure to failure. Not success to failure, failure to success, but from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look, I'm talking about the one percenters now. I'm talking about the one percenters now. I'm talking about how do you become one percent? How, how do you become a one percenter? You, you, you go from average to good, from good to great, from great to epic, all right? And it starts, number one, y'all, it starts, number one, y'all, by understanding, by understanding that you got to go in your mind and you got to work hard by understanding that you got to go in your mind and you got to get those skills by understanding that what you have is good, but you got to add to it. And more importantly, you heard it said before that your attitude determines your altitude. You got to understand that the greats don't need the sun to shine because they make the sun shine. You got to understand that the greats don't need, greats don't care if it's rain, if it's sleep, if it's snow, they don't care. They create the sun on the inside. They don't look for external things to motivate them, to pump them up, to get them going. The one percenters, they find a way to grab something within. It's something within that I cannot explain. It's something in that it's my why that wakes me up. It's my why that makes me grind. It's my why that even when I fail, I wake up the next day like I succeeded. <laughs> you know, I hear what I'm saying? It's easy to act like you succeeded. It's easy to have an attitude of gratitude. It's easy to be pumped up and motivated when you go from success to success. It's easy when you go from failure to success. But do you have the ability to go from failure to failure and wake up and act like you succeeded? Can you push the reset button and still get pumped up and still get motivated and still get fired up and still put in 120% when it doesn't look the way you think it should look? When it's snowing outside, when it's sleet outside, when it's raining outside, do you have that something within that just can't be explained? And you need that. Winston Churchill said, success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. It is the power to motivate yourself when nobody around you is motivated. It is the ability to see death and still find light. It is the ability to see pain and destruction and anguish and worry and still be motivated and still be ready to grind and still find joy and still find happiness and still find life. And so it's your boy E.T. saying, are you ready to be happy, baby? Are you ready to be happy, baby? Are you ready to be happy? You can do it. This is your time. This is your season. This is a time where the world is slowed down. This is a time where it's not as busy as it normally is. If you can't make it happen now, when are you going to make it happen? I challenge you.
I dare you. I double dare you. I triple dare you. Forget about the rest and commit to being epic in every area of your life. Ricky, thank you. Demetrius, thank you. Hmm. To my Be Epic family, thank you. Make your next move your best move and make the rest of your life the best of your life. It's your boy E.T. saying if it was easy, everybody would do it. It's not going to be easy, but you have what it takes to be epic. So be epic.